Hi everybody and welcome to Editing 360 Photos with Photoshop and After Effects. My name is Chris Converse and I'm going to be sharing with you a bunch of uh, techniques and workflows that I use uh, with both After Effects and Photoshop to take an image that looks like this and turn it into something that looks like this. Throughout the course we're going to be adding a sunset, uh, compositing another image of a sky and um, placing that in here doing color adjustments and adding two-dimensional artwork so that we can take an image and create something like this in a 360 photo. Um, and don't worry if you've never used After Effects or Photoshop before, I'm gonna be walking through my process step by step so you'll be able to um, follow along even if you've never used either of the applications before. And so here's a little bit about what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be starting with this photo here. Um, doesn't look that great, it was taken on an overcast day. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by removing the tripod and table across the bottom. We're going to clean up the grass and the patio, make it look fantastic. Next, we're going to add in a sky. We're going to take a sky from another 360 photo and put it into this particular image. Then we're going to add a sunset using some effects inside of After Effects and do some color adjustments to sell the overall effect. And finally, we're going to be adding some two-dimensional artwork and fitting this into the bottom of the spherical panorama or the 360 photo. So the ending result will be something that when we post this on social media or use this in Google Street View, you'll have this uh, logo that shows up here at the bottom. So with that, that's everything we're going to be doing throughout the course. In the next video, we're going to talk about the software that you'll need. Um, and don't worry if you don't have a 360 camera. Um, the images that we're going to be using are being supplied in the class materials. So with that, let's continue on and get started. If you want to follow along with this course, there are exercise files that you can download. And you'll need to have the Creative Cloud versions of both Photoshop and After Effects installed on your computer. And for After Effects, this needs to be at least the 2018 release, which became available from Adobe in October of 2017. This version introduces the new VR Comp Editor, which is what makes it possible to add content to our spherical panorama with a unique and non-destructive workflow. Now, if you've never used After Effects before, the next video will discuss the interface and how After Effects relates to other design tools in the Creative Cloud including Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. If you've never worked in After Effects before, then you're in for a real treat. I think this is one of the most fun applications to design in. And if you're familiar with Photoshop, you already know the basics. And After Effects works the same way as other Creative Cloud design applications, including Illustrator and InDesign. In fact, the main panels in After Effects function the same way as panels in other applications. The only real difference is what they're named. The Timeline panel in After Effects works like the Layers panel in the other apps. The Composition panel is similar to the Canvas in Photoshop, or an Artboard in Illustrator, or a page in InDesign. The Project panel shows linked files, just like a linked Smart Object in Photoshop, or the Links panel in both Illustrator and InDesign. And finally, a Pre-Comp, or a Pre-Composed Composition in After Effects, works like a Smart Object in Photoshop, or a Symbol in Illustrator, allowing you to have multiple instances of the same artwork throughout your layout. And as I mentioned, After Effects works a lot like Photoshop. In Photoshop, we can apply effects to layers, then specify the properties. After Effects uses the same workflow to apply effects to layers in the Timeline panel. Now when you first look at the After Effects interface, it can be a little intimidating, but for this course, we're only going to be using a few panels. The Timeline panel, which is where we'll find all of our layers. The Composition panel, where we'll create our layouts. The Project panel, which shows us the linked files, as well as the compositions and artwork that we may have created. And the Precomps, that can be opened or closed from the Timeline panel, or opened from the Project panel. Now there are two more panels that you won't see in the other design applications that I mentioned, and these are the Effects and Presets and the Effect Controls panels. The Effect and Presets panel works a lot like the filter menu in Photoshop, where you browse and apply effects, and the Effect Controls panel works a lot like the Layer Styles dialog box in Photoshop, where you set the properties for the effects you've applied. And so now that we've had a brief overview, the best way to learn is to dive in. So next, we'll take a look at what's included in the exercise files, and then we'll begin editing our spherical panoramic photo. The exercise files contain a series of folders that I think will make it easier to separate out the stages of the workflow. Folder A contains the original 360 photo that I shot at the Lakemore Retreat, as well as the top portion of another 360 photo taken on a different day when the sky was less cloudy. And before I move on, I'd like to thank the folks at the Lakemore Retreat for providing me with written permission to use their logo for these videos. Now the logo that I am providing in the exercise files, however, is a fictitious logo, not the Lakemore Retreat logo. So you can use this sample logo as you follow along, or I would encourage you to use your own logo during the course to see how your logo looks displayed in a spherical panorama. And continuing through the files, folders B and C are empty. We'll be adding files to them as we progress through the course. 
And finally, folder D contains a copy of the final spherical panorama. So once you have the required software installed and a copy of the exercise files, let's continue on and start editing our spherical panorama. To begin our project, let's launch After Effects and let's make sure that we can see all of the panels that we talked about earlier. So once you've launched After Effects, let's go up to the window menu, let's come down to Workspace, and let's choose Small Screen. That's going to give us our Composition panel here in the center, our Project panel over on the left, our Timeline panel down at the bottom, and over on the right hand side we'll see a few additional panels. Let's come over here and let's close the Libraries panel. Let's come over here and close Preview, and we'll also close Info. We want to make sure that we have the effects and presets open. And the last panel that we're going to need is the effect controls. So back to the window menu, let's come down and activate effect controls. Now in this workspace, the effect controls is going to be next to the project panel. So if I click project panel, we'll see all of the contents of the project panel and effect controls will show us all of the controls for any effect that we apply to our compositions. And so now let's make sure our project panel is showing. Let's go to the file menu come down to Import, choose File, and from the exercise files, let's go into folder A, and let's locate lakemoreretreat underscore original dot JPEG, then click Open. That's going to link this JPEG file into the project panel. Now to create a composition, let's click and hold on this file. Let's drag and drop it over into the composition panel. This will automatically create a composition exactly the size of the JPEG, which we can see here is 5,376 by 2,688 pixels. In the center here, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And so now that we've created a new composition, we can see the composition showing up here in the project panel. And we can also see our JPEG showing up as a new layer in the timeline panel. And now what we're going to need to do is isolate the table and the tripod, which is showing up down here in the bottom of the unwrapped spherical panorama, and isolate these so that none of those pixels touch the edges. And to do this, we're going to need to activate the VR comp editor. So let's go to the window menu and choose VR Comp Editor down at the bottom. Now, if you get a message from After Effects stating that you need to enable scripts to write files and access your network, then open the General Preferences section in After Effects, located under the Edit menu in Windows or the After Effects Application menu on the Mac. Then check the box next to the text that reads Allow Scripts to Write Files and Access Network. Then click OK. And then try again to open the VR Comp Editor from the Window menu. And once the VR Comp Editor loads, I'll resize mine a little bit, and then we'll click Add a 2D Edit. For the composition, we're going to choose Lakemore Retreat. For the comp width, let's come in here and change this to 2200 pixels. This will increase the size of the editing comp so that we can more easily isolate the tripod. And then come down and click Add 2D Edit. So once that's applied, let's close the VR Comp Editor. Over in the Project Panel, you see we got two folders, one with Lakemore Retreat Original VR2 Output, and another one for the solids. Inside of here, we'll see a series of additional compositions that have been created. We can close up all of these. And down in the timeline panel, two of these comps are opened, the VR2 Edit 1 and the VR2 Output. The Edit Composition is where we're going to be able to add new artwork, and the Output Comp, which I'll activate here, will show us the results of all of the edits being distorted back into the unwrapped sphere. Now this tool can be rather taxing on a GPU or the graphics processing unit. If you see this dialog box here, we'll come down and choose Ignore, letting us know that we don't have enough RAM in our GPU. Let's come in here, change the resolution from full down to half. Then if we click back to edit and then click back to the output, we'll now see the unwrapped sphere. Now if you see some messages inside of here in red telling you that you need to activate the GPU acceleration, Go up to the File menu, come down to Project Settings, and in the Video Rendering and Effects, make sure that you have the Mercury GPU acceleration turned on. And now to isolate the tripod, let's go back to the Edit Composition. I'll zoom up in here a little bit. You'll notice in this composition there is a VR camera showing up here. Let's go up to the top toolbar, let's find the Camera tool. If we click and hold on this, there are a series of different camera options. We're going to leave the top selection here, Unified Camera Tool. Then move your cursor inside of the composition, click and drag, and you can look around inside the spherical panorama. So what we want to do is scroll up here so that we can see 
the tripod and the table completely isolated inside of the areas. And what I mean by that is the tripod and the shadow don't touch the edges of the composition here. And once we have this positioned similar to this, we're ready to save this out to Photoshop. Now, if your graphics processing unit allows you to see this view in full resolution, you can come up to the composition menu, come down to save frame as, and choose Photoshop layers. Then go into the exercise files, go into retouching, and we're gonna name this Lakemore underscore retreat, underscore tripod, underscore export. And then we'll choose save. And now, however, if your GPU only allows you to see the resolution at half, what you're gonna to need to do is come up to the composition menu, come down to save frame as, and choose file. This is gonna open up After Effects' render queue, which we can see down here. Next to output module, let's click on the name Photoshop. Let's come in here and check resize. We wanna make sure that we save the full resolution, which is 2200 by 1238. Let's click OK. For the output, let's click on the file name. I'll go to Exercise Files. We'll come out to Retouching. And I'm going to come in here and overwrite the file we created earlier. So I'll come down here and hit Save. Choose Replace. And then we'll come down here and click Render. Now the only difference in the resulting Photoshop file is that if your GPU supports full resolution previews, the Layers panel in your Photoshop composition will have some layer groups inside of it. If you had to use the render queue, which I've done here, we'll have a single layered Photoshop file. Now this won't have any effect on the final project. In both cases, we got a full resolution export from After Effects and we'll still be able to do all of our retouching in Photoshop. And now before we continue on to Photoshop to edit out the tripod, let's save our After Effects project. So let's go up to the file menu. Let's come down and choose save. Let's go into the exercise files. Let's go into retouching and let's name this Lakemore underscore retreat underscore modified dot AEP, which stands for After Effects Project, and then choose Save. And now the last comment I wanna make is inside of the Edit 1 composition, make sure that you don't change the camera position. After we make our edits in Photoshop, we're gonna bring that Photoshop file back into this composition and cover up the tripod. Now in our exercise files in folder B, we have a new Photoshop file that we got from After Effects. So let's open this up in Photoshop. In the Layers panel, we'll see a folder corresponding to each one of the compositions that was in the original After Effects composition when we exported this. So I'm simply going to come in here and remove these folders. You can hit Command-Shift-G on the Mac or Control-Shift-G in Windows. Just remove the groups. Now let's create a new layer. At the bottom of the Layers panel, I'll click New Layer. We'll name this Retouched. With this layer selected, let's go to the toolbar. Let's select the Spot Healing Brush. Make sure that you have Sample All Layers turned on as well. And then let's come over to the canvas and click and draw an area that will encompass the entire tripod and table and the shadow of the camera. Once you have that area painted out, let go with the mouse and then Photoshop will heal that entire area. It will replace the tripod and the table, everything inside of that painted area with samples from the surrounding area, which is all the grass. So we wanna make sure inside of this file that we don't touch any of the pixels on the edges. This particular tile will seamlessly fit back into the sphere. So before we leave Photoshop, I'll make my brush a little bit smaller. I'm gonna take out that leaf down there and spot heal a few other areas. We're going to take out this access panel that's in the ground, but we're gonna do that a little bit later on. Again, we don't wanna to touch any of the edge pixels in this Photoshop file. So back in the Layers panel, all of our edits are now on this retouched layer, so we can always come back and make changes if we need to. So I'll leave both layers on, come up to the File menu, and come down and choose Save. Then we'll close the Photoshop file. So now we've modified this Photoshop file to remove the tripod on that separate layer. So next, we'll re-import this Photoshop file back into our After Effects composition and replace the existing tripod in the current camera view. Now that we've removed the tripod from the Lakemore Retreat tripod export Photoshop file, let's go back to After Effects. We're inside of the VR Edit 1 composition. Let's come up to the File menu. Let's come down and choose Import, then choose File. In the Exercise Files, let's go into Folder B. Let's choose the Lakemore Retreat export.psd. 
with our tripod removed. Let's click open. Now for the options here, we're going to choose footage. We do have the option to choose specific layers. Or if we come down to composition, we can actually bring in multiple layers at once inside of the After Effects file. But instead, let's come in here and just choose footage, which will treat all of the layers of the Photoshop file as one individual graphic. Let's choose open. And now over in the project panel, let's click and drag the tripod export. And let's drag it right into our composition and it should snap into place. And now to see the effects of this edit, let's come down to the VR output composition. We'll now see that that new artwork is being distorted and mapped into that unwrapped spherical panorama. Now, if you notice this composition in the timeline panel, there's a little effects icon here. If we come up to the effect controls, we can see the VR converter effects being applied to this composition. And there's a few things we can change inside of here. One nice feature under the reorient camera view gives us the ability to change the content of that unwrapped spherical panorama. So for example, we can come in here and change the pan by changing the degrees and we can actually move or reorient the panorama. Now this is a great feature to have inside of here. However, we want to make that change inside of Photoshop because there's additional edits that we're going to make, additional retouching we want to do, and we want to make sure that all of the items that we're going to be retouching don't touch the edges. And if we make the change that we want to make now, this access panel, for example, will actually come over here and touch the edge. So again, we're going to make this change in Photoshop, but I wanted you to know that this particular plugin allows us to make some of these changes inside of After Effects, including rolling the unwrapped sphere on the Z axis or tilting it on the X axis. And so now that we have seamlessly replaced the tripod, we need to export this out to a brand new panorama. Now, just like before, if you're looking at the half screen resolution, you're going to need to use the render queue. And if you're looking at the full screen preview, you can use the save as Photoshop layers. So if you're seeing a full resolution preview, you can go composition, save frame as, choose Photoshop layers. And if you're seeing the half resolution, like I'm seeing here, we're going to come up to save frame as, then choose file. Then in the render queue, click on Photoshop, click on resize to make sure that we get the full size, which is 5,376 by 2,688. Click OK. Then click the file name for output. Go to exercise files. Let's go into retouching. And in either case, whether you're doing save as Photoshop layers or using the render queue, we're going to name this Lakemore underscore retreat underscore modified.psd. And then we'll click save. And just like before, if you use the save Photoshop layers, you'll get a series of layer groups inside of the Photoshop layers panel. And if you use the render queue, like I just did here, you'll get a single background layer inside of the layers panel. And again, since these are both full resolution exports, this isn't going to affect the final project. And so now with our modified spherical panorama, next we can make further edits inside of Photoshop. So at this point, we have a new spherical image to work with inside of our retouching folder. So let's open up Lakemore underscore retreat underscore modified dot PSD in Photoshop. Now in the layers panel, we'll see a whole series of folders, just like we got earlier when we first exported our composition from After Effects. So inside of here, if we turn on and off different layers, we can see that After Effects has put all of these items together. So just like before, I'm going to remove all the layer groups here. So we're just left with the three individual art layers. So just like before, let's create a new layer. We'll name this Retouched. With this layer selected, let's select a spot healing brush. Again, make sure we have sample from all layers turned on. I'm going to zoom up here a little bit. And what I want to do is just come in here and clean up some of the areas of the lawn. So by increasing and decreasing the brush, I'm going to come in here and just paint some different areas along the grass. For the access panel, we'll just paint an area large enough to cover the entire panel. And then let go. Hold my spacebar to get the hand tool. And then I'll just pan around the image and just clean up different areas. I'll remove additional leaves. I'll heal some of the dry patches. And again, just keep going around and just finding little spots to fix. And over on the far right, we have a little bit of a lens flare from the camera. So I'll just come in here and heal that area as well. Next, I'll pan over to the patio. Zoom up here a little bit. I want to fix a little bit of the mulch here. 
So in the tools, let's come over and select the clone stamp tool. Let's come up to our brushes. Let's pick a soft brush. Increase my brush size a little bit. Now I'm going to follow the angle of the patio here. So I'm going to hold the Option key or Alt in Windows. I'm going to click to sample from here. I'm going to move over and I'm going to start to paint the same sort of angle over here next to the patio. Next I'll go back to the Spot Healing Brush. Make this smaller. Let's just clean up the patio a little bit. Pan up to the right. Hit a few more spots up here. And then zoom out and take a look. So now I think this looks good. And the next thing I want to do is reset the panorama so that when this loads in a viewer, the house is near the center of the stage. So to do that, let's go over to the Layers panel. Let's select our Retouch layer. Hold the Shift key. Select all of the layers. Let's right click. Convert all of these to a smart object. Then with this layer selected, let's come up to the filter menu. Let's come down to Other, and let's come down and choose Offset. So what we're going to do here is make sure that we have Wrap Around turned on under the Undefined Areas. For the Horizontal Value, we're going to set this to 1800 pixels. And for Vertical, we're going to set this to 0. So basically what this is doing is taking any of the pixels that are getting pushed off of the edge and wrapping them around to the other side. So now we've got the house pretty much in the center of the stage. So at this point, we'll click OK, then go to the File menu and choose Save. And now that we're done retouching the lawn and the patio, next we'll add in a new sky. Now we're going to replace the sky in this image, which is really blown out from this overcast day, with another 360 sky that I took on a different day. So to begin, let's go to the File menu with our Lakemore Retreat modified PSD file open. Let's come down and choose Place Linked. From the exercise files, let's go into the original files. Let's choose sky.jpg and then click place. Press return and this will make a new smart object file in the layers panel. Now the sun was right about here and we're going to be adding a sun to our image just to the right of the house. So the first thing we'll do is use the offset filter to move the sky so that the hot spot here is matching where we're going to place our sun. So with the sky layer selected, let's go down to the filter menu. Let's come down to offset. And what we're going to do is set the horizontal offset to negative 1300, set the vertical to zero, and make sure we have wraparound turned on. And we can see the hotspot here is going to be about right there. Let's click OK. Next, let's grab this layer and move it to the top. With the layer selected, let's come up to the image menu. Let's come down to adjustments. Let's apply hue saturation. What we need to do here is desaturate this image so it looks more natural in the original image. Later on, when we add the sun and do color adjustments, we're going to enhance the entire image, which will bring back some of this color. So in the hue saturation, let's come down to lightness. Let's bring this up to about 32. Then click OK. Next, let's select the retouched layer. Hit Command or Control J to duplicate that layer. Let's move this above the sky. And then we want to set a blend mode on the retouched copy. So with this selected, let's come up to the blend modes. Let's come down and choose multiply. What this will do is take the darkest pixels, which will be all the trees in this area, and help superimpose the detail of the trees back onto the sky that we just imported. Next, with retouch copy selected, Let's come up to the layer menu. Let's come down and choose Create a Clipping Mask. That will clip the retouched copy layer into the sky layer. Next, let's select the sky layer. Let's add a layer mask. Let's make sure that we have black and white on the foreground and background in the color swatches. Let's come up and select the gradient tool. Make sure the mask is selected. And let's come over here. Let's get our cursor about halfway down the height of the windows. Let's click, hold the shift key. This is really important. We need to make sure that the gradient is a perfect vertical line so that the pixels match on the right and left. And let's click and drag up and apply a gradient mask. 
So that might be a little high. Let me come back and just make that not quite as high. Do this to about right there. Next, let's zoom up on the image. With our mask still selected, let's select our brush tool. Let's make sure that we have a soft brush selected. I'm going to make the brush rather large, and we want to paint some additional masking shapes in here to get rid of the blue cast on the house. So I'm just going to click a little bit near the edge, click and drag, and just sort of paint that back in. I don't want that blue cast showing up on the green of the house. And so now that we have the sky added to the image, let's come up to the file menu. Let's come down and choose save. Once this saves, let's close our Photoshop file. And now we're ready to create a brand new After Effects project based on this new modified spherical panorama and then add our special effects, including the sun and our color adjustments. So now we're ready to create a new After Effects file based on our newly modified spherical panorama. So let's go back to After Effects. Now we could add another composition and do a whole series of edits inside of this current file. However, I think it's a lot easier to just work with a new project file. So this will be the project of our modified spherical panorama. We're going to create another one to do all of our enhancements. So inside of After Effects to close a project, we come up to the File menu and come down and choose Close Project. Save Changes, we're going to say Save. And After Effects will default back to a new untitled project. So to begin our new project, let's come up to the File menu. Let's come down to Import. Choose File. In the Retouching folder, let's select Lakemore Retreat Modified.psd. Let's open that. We're going to bring this in as footage. Merge Layers. Click OK. Now we have the project linked in the Project panel. Let's click and drag and create a new composition. Next, let's go to the File menu. Let's choose Save. Let's put this in the Enhancing folder, and let's name this LakemoreRetreat.aep. And now to create a sun on this image, we're going to use an adjustment layer and an effect. So the first thing we'll do is come up to the Layer menu. Let's come down to New, and let's choose Adjustment Layer. That's going to give us a new layer down here on the timeline. Now we're doing this because we're going to need to mask this effect because the sun rays that come out can't touch the top of the canvas because that's going to look strange when this is showing in a spherical viewer. So we want to make sure to be able to mask this, which is why we have to put this on a separate layer. So with the adjustment layer selected, let's come into the effects and presets. Let's come in here and do a search. Type in the word rays. We're looking for this plugin here called CC Light Rays. So let's click and drag this and drop it and apply it to the adjustment layer. Once we do that, we'll see the effect control showing up over here next to the project panel. And on the main stage, we'll see the effect showing up here. So we can actually grab this and move it around. And anywhere this effect intersects with pixels on the layer, we're going to get this light bursting effect. So what we're going to do first is we're going to put this right down here near the trees. And we can start to see some of the light effect happening already. So leave that right there for the moment. Let's come over to the effect controls. For the intensity, let's come in here and set this to 165. I'll hit the tab key to tab down. Let's come down to the radius. We're going to set this to 23. For the warp softness, we're going to set this to 0. Then for the shape, we're going to come down and set this to a square. That's going to give us the ability to add some rotation to this as well. So we can rotate this effect around. This will help control where the light rays are shining. So I'll set this to 28 degrees. We're going to leave Allow Color from Source and Allow Brightening. What Color from Source means is that where this effect is being applied, the pixels underneath are going to be the color of the effect. So now I'll come back here to the main stage. I'm going to just move this around a little bit just to get some of the rays to angle around, pick something that looks nice. And once I like the effect, let's come back to the effect controls. We're going to toggle light rays closed. And now I'm going to hit Command-D on the Mac or Control-D in Windows and duplicate this entire effect. So basically, I'm applying the same effect twice. Now for the second copy, let's come in here and set the intensity to 130. We'll make this a little bit less. 
For the radius, we'll bring this down to 21. For the shape, we'll leave this at a square. We'll leave the degrees at 28. But we're going to come down here to color from source and uncheck this. Now let's come down to the color swatch. Let's click on the color swatch and let's choose a medium orange color. So that looks good about right there. And now we'll click OK. Now this might be a little hard to see. I'm going to zoom up here a little bit to about 50%. I'm going to hold this space bar and click and drag. Just like in Photoshop, we can pan around. And then we can see how this effect is looking on the stage. So now we can move the center point of these around to kind of change the orange color. And you can change the intensity for the light rays that's bringing in the orange or the light rays bringing in the white. So I'm going to come in here and increase my intensity to about 140. And these will also be affected based on exactly where the center points are for both of these effects. So once that looks good, I'm going to zoom back out. Now the last thing we need to do is apply a mask. So we'll select the adjustment layer, come up to the toolbar. We're going to select the rectangle tool. And if you click and drag with the rectangle tool or any of the vector tools while you have a layer selected, it's going to create a mask. So what I'm going to do is start in the lower left hand corner outside of my composition area. I'm going to click and drag all the way across to the right. And then I'm going to come into the image and I'm going to bring this to the point where the top of the mask will be right around the top of the house. And again, we need to make sure that the light rays are not touching the top of this image. So now with the mask created, in the composition window, we can see this mask icon here. If this is turned on or is blue, this means we can see the mask shape, which is just a rectangle. Down in the timeline, we can see the mask now showing up under the adjustment layer. Let's toggle open the mask properties. Let's find the mask feather. Let's uncheck the link and let's set the Y axis to about 250 pixels. So I'll type 250, hit tab or return. And what that will do is feather the effect 125 pixels above and 125 pixels below the top edge of this mask. So giving us a 250 pixel gradient of that effect. Now we'll just come down to the timeline panel and close all of these up. And so now that we have the sun added to the image, next we're going to make some color adjustments so that the rest of the image matches that new effect. So now that we added the sun to this image, we're going to need to make some color adjustments to the rest of the image so that this looks more believable. So we're going to start by going back to the effects and presets. Let's come in here and let's search for hue saturation. So I'll just type in hue. I can see that showing up here. And we want to apply this to the Photoshop file or the base layer, not the adjustment layer. So to do that, we can click and drag and just drop this right on top of the Photoshop layer in the timeline panel. And once this effect is applied, let's come up to the Effect Controls panel. Let's come down to Master Saturation, and let's increase this to about 36. That's going to really warm up the greens and the tops of the trees, and really make it look as though the sun is actually hitting all of this. Now that is going to knock out some of the reds as well. So let's close up the Hue Saturation. Let's go back to the Effects and Presets. Let's search for color balance. Let's find this. Let's drag and drop it on top of the Photoshop layer. And then in the effect controls, let's check preserve luminosity. And then we'll come up to shadow red balance. We'll set this to 11. And then we'll come down to highlight red balance. And we'll set this to five. And so now we've completed adding our enhancements. Next, we'll add a logo so we can brand this image, and we'll place that down where the tripod used to be. So now we're ready to add a logo into our spherical panorama. So let's switch back to our project panel. Next, let's go to the file menu. Let's come down to import, choose file. And from the exercise files, let's go into folder A, and let's choose logo.png. Now, as I mentioned before, we're not including the Lakemore Retreat logo in this particular course. We have a sample logo instead. However, I would encourage you to use your own logo so you can see how your branding looks inside of a sphere. So once you have a logo selected, let's come down and choose Open. Next, let's go to the Window menu. Let's come down and activate the VR Comp Editor. Let's click Add 2D Edit. For the composition, let's choose Lakemore Retreat Modified. For the comp width, 
Let's bring this up to about 2,000 pixels and then click Add 2D Edit. And just like before, if you get the GPU effects error, click Ignore. Change your resolution in both the edit and the output to half. Switch over to output, click Ignore. I'll set this one to half as well. Now I can click between the two. Let's close the VR Comp Editor. And in the Edit 1 Composition, let's come up and click the Unified Camera Tool. Let's click and pan. I want to view the bottom of the sphere where we remove the tripod. Next I'll switch to my Selection Tool. Then back to the Project Panel. Let's grab Logo.ping. Let's drag and drop this into place. We want to make sure that the logo doesn't touch any of the edges. So I'll come in here and just scale this a little bit. I'm also going to rotate this. Down in the Timeline panel, let's toggle open the properties for logo.ping. Let's toggle open Transform. Let's find Rotation. Let's click and drag on the numbers. Just rotate this a little bit. Somewhere around 21 degrees. Close up Transform. Next, let's add an outer glow, just to make this a little bit more visible against the grass. So let's right click on logo.ping. Let's choose layer styles, choose outer glow. And this works just like outer glow inside of Photoshop. So let's toggle open the properties for outer glow down in the timeline panel. For the blending mode, let's come up and choose linear burn. Scroll down. For the size, Let's set this to about 20. Hit tab. For the spread, we'll set this to 10%. Hit tab again. Scroll up a little bit. For the opacity, we're gonna set this to 10%. And then for color, let's click on the color swatch. Next, we'll select the eyedropper inside of this dialog box. Let's come up here and select a medium green. We'll just lighten this a little bit. Then choose okay. Then I'll just come in here and toggle these properties closed. Let's go back to the composition. I'm just going to scale this up just a little bit. And then with that in place, let's go back to the Lakemore Retreat output composition. And now we can see our logo distorted to fit into our unwrapped panorama. And now at this point, to save out our final panorama, we're going to need to use the render queue, regardless of whether you can see the full resolution or not. This is because we applied an effect to an adjustment layer, and that's a technique that's not supported inside of Photoshop. And besides, we can render out the final JPEG from the render queue. So from inside of the output composition, let's go up to the composition menu, come down to save frame as, choose file. For output module, click on Photoshop. Let's change this to JPEG sequence. Then inside of the video output section, click on format options. Let's bring this up to about a quality of 9. Click OK. Click OK again. Next, click on the output file. Let's choose the desktop. And we're going to save this as lakemoreretreat.jpg. Then choose Save. And then we'll come down here and click Render. And now with our final JPEG on the desktop, next we'll make sure that we have the proper metadata inside so we can share this on social media. Now that we have our final panorama on the desktop, our lakemoreretreat.jpg file, let's double click this and open it up in Photoshop. Now one thing that we'll need for some social media platforms is the proper metadata. Now sites like Facebook, for example, will use the camera data. Now from the file menu in Photoshop, if I come down to file info and then select camera data, you'll see that all of the camera data is missing. I'll click okay. If we go back to the exercise files, Let's open up the original Lakemore Retreat file inside of folder A, come up to the file menu, come down to file info, you'll see all of the camera data here. So I took this shot using the Rico Theta. So one thing we could do is we could switch back to the brand new JPEG file we created, grab the layer, hold the shift key, drag it into the original file, then choose file, export, save for web, Set the quality somewhere around 80 or 90. And then under metadata, make sure that we select all. Then click save. Then on the desktop, I'll name this Lakemore underscore retreat underscore test. Choose save. 
Let's close both these files. Let's open our test file back up in Photoshop, do a file info, and we'll see the camera information showing up here. And unfortunately, at the time of this recording, we can't edit the camera metadata inside of Photoshop, nor can we add some of the new and emerging meta tags. So at this point, let's click OK. Let's close our test file. And let's go to our browser to find an online tool. So the one that I like is called the exifer.net. With this site loaded, let's scroll down. Let's grab our original Lakemore Retreat JPEG file, which has no metadata in it. Let's drag and drop it inside of this area here. Scroll down a little bit, we can see that uploading. Once it's uploading, we can click the exif.me button. That's going to bring up this dialog box here where we can put in some additional data. So under the first tab, exif general, let's come in here and add the make and model of the camera. So I'll start typing Rico. That'll show up in a drop down menu. Next, we'll type Rico Theta, and I'll choose Rico Theta S. And now for most social media sites, this will be enough. All of the social media sites have records of all of the 360 cameras on the market. However, there are some new tags that are emerging. So let's come up here and select XMP G Pano tags. Then we'll scroll down. We're looking for the projection type. Let's type equa rectangular. This is the unwrapped format we've been working with where the width is twice the size of the height. And then let's come down and choose go. Once that's done, we can close this dialog box. And then here in the main window, let's click on download. And that's going to download a new version of our JPEG file with all of the metadata. So to check this, let's open up Lakemore Retreat-2 in Photoshop. Let's go to the file menu, choose file info. Under camera data, we'll see that data was injected. And then if we come down to raw data, we can even see our new G panel showing up here. So Photoshop understands and sees that data. However, there is no way for us to add that inside of Photoshop. So using that website will give us the ability to add the camera data as well as some new and emerging tags. So now I'll delete the Lakemore Retreat JPEG and the test file. I'm going to rename Lakemore Retreat-2 to simply Lakemore Retreat, close my exercise files, and now we're ready to share this on social media. Now in order to preview the user experience of our new panorama, we're going to need a viewer. Many camera manufacturers have their own viewers for computers and mobile devices, and you don't need to own a camera to view the images. I have a copy of the free Rico Theta Viewer, which you can find by searching for Rico Theta app, and I can preview the panorama simply by dragging the JPEG into the app window. And once I like the revised user experience that we created in this class, I'm ready to share this online. At the time of this recording, many social networks are supporting 360 photos with their own built-in viewers as well. So to demonstrate this on the most popular social network, I'll log into Facebook and post our JPEG file as a new photo. Facebook then reads the metadata and then activates its built-in 360 viewer, which will allow anyone to explore the image. And if someone is on a mobile device with an accelerometer, they can also explore the image by moving their device around. And so with that, we've completed editing our 360 photo. We removed the tripod, added in a logo, cleaned up the lawn, added a sunset, uh, composited another image to get a new sky, made color adjustments, and all of those techniques really just come together to really transform this image. So now we're ready to share this on social media platforms, Google Street View, again, anywhere that 360 photos are supported. And so with that, I really appreciate you watching my course, and I hope to see you again in another course here on Creative Live.